So this is week 9 lecture video for Math 203, Chapter 17, Critical IV Calculations, Part 1. Uh, so we have hourly flow rates for dosage per and per time infusions. So a dosage per hour. You can kind of think of it as the D, but instead of just giving an amount of medication, you're given an amount of drug over a specific period of time. So if you have heparin, a thousand units, and it's supposed to, ordered to run a thousand units per hour, okay? On hand, you have 20,000 units in 1500 milliliters of dextrose. To find the flow rate, you can multiply the, call it your D rate, and your concentration. You just have to make sure you end up with milliliters on the top and hours on the bottom. So your D rate is a thousand units per hour. You want hours on the bottom, so that ratio is fine. Now the 20,000 units in 1500 milliliters, which is what you have on hand, we want milliliters on top because we want to end up with milliliters per hour. So instead of writing it as 20,000 units over 1,500 milliliters, we'll write it as 1,500 milliliters over 20,000 units. So this is kind of like a dimensional analysis type because we can cross out the word units, multiply across the top and across the bottom, reduce your fraction, and you get a flow rate of 75 milliliters per hour. So to find the flow rate when you're given a D rate and a concentration, you multiply the D rate and the concentration as an inverted ratio. Uh, now sometimes you'll be given a dosage per minute. Um, and remember with flow rates, those are always per hour. So the first thing we're gonna do is convert our micrograms per minute to milligrams per hour. Um, I'm going to convert the micrograms to milligrams because milligrams is what I have on hand. So to convert a microgram to a milligram, remember you divide by a thousand. So 10 micrograms are, is equal to 0 0.01 milligrams. So now instead of 10 micrograms per minute, we have 0 0.01 milligrams per minute. Now we need to change that to a per hour rate. So we have our milligrams per minute and we can multiply by 60 minutes to one hour to get our milligrams per hour. So that would be 0 0.6 milligrams per hour. So now we have what we refer to as our D rate. We need 0 0.6 milligrams per hour. And we can multiply that by our um, 250 milliliters over 25 milligrams. So this is our concentration, but we're going to invert it so we can cancel our milligrams. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and you have your flow rate in milliliters per hour. Now, determining the hourly dose. So this is kind of the opposite of what we just did. Previously, we were given the D rate and the concentration, and we had to find the flow rate. Well, here you're given the flow rate and the concentration, and we're looking for the D rate. So this is very similar to what we just did, except now you're gonna take your flow rate milliliters per hour and you're going to multiply it by your concentration but this time you're going to leave the concentration as units over milliliters. This way the milliliters cancel and you're going to end up with units over hours which is what the D rate was, amount of drug over an amount of time. So we have 60,000 units in 1500 milliliter bag of dextrose. 
that's the bag we have. So that's our on hand, our Q or H and Q. You can think of it as your H and Q. This is what we're infusing. And we have an infusion rate, 25 milliliters per hour. So if we take our infusion rate, flow rate, milliliters per hour, multiply it by the concentration. This time the concentration is not inverted. We're leaving the concentration as units per milliliter. You see your milliliters cancel. Multiply across the top and bottom, reduce your fraction, and you get the number of units per hour, which we referred to as the D rate. Okay, so if we have a 45 milliliter per hour flow rate, we have a bag that is 2,500 2, units, no, 25,000 units in 2,500 milliliters. Same thing. Here's our flow rate in milliliters per hour. Here is our concentration in units per milliliter. Milliliters cancel, multiply across the top and bottom, you get your D rate of units per hour. So the flow rate times the concentration, or the concentration times the flow rate, it doesn't matter what order, remember, multiplication is commutative. Those will give you the amount of drug over time, which we refer to as the D rate. So heparin, um, when administering heparin, we follow a protocol, which is a preprinted order uh, that guides us in the, the administration and the adjusting of our heparin infusions. Uh, so heparin is administered as a bolus dose, which is your initial dose. Um, the initial dose is based on weight, so we have to know our weight conversions and we have to know how to calculate the bolus dose and then we'll learn how to calculate the infusion rate. Okay, so here is a sample protocol. Uh, so reading through the protocol, we see our on hand for our bolus dose is actually different than the on hand for our infusion dose. So for your bolus dose, you're gonna have a thousand units per milliliter on hand that we're using. And the bolus dose um, is 80 units per kilogram. Then your infusion is started out at 18 units per kilogram per hour and you're using an on hand of 50 units per milliliter. So it's important to read your, in your instructions and pick out those pieces of information. Then heparin is also based on an APTT result and you will change your heparin dosage, well, may or may not change depending on those results. So our first patient, 50 kilograms. The initial bolus dose based on our protocol is 80 units per kilogram. So it's a weight-based dose. We take our units, multiply by our kilogram, 4,000 units. So our on hand is 1,000 units per loop, milliliter. So we have to administer 4,000 units, so we have to calculate how many milliliters um, is needed to administer the 4,000 units. So that's our normal everyday dosage calculation. You can use your formula method, your dimensional analysis method, your proportion method. I tend to use the formula method. The uh, amount to administer is equal to your D over H times Q. So our D we calculated at 4,000 units and our H is 1,000 units per Q, which is one milliliter. So the amount to administer would be four milliliters. Um, a bolus dose for a PTT of 57, we look back at our uh, protocol. 57 is right here between 54 and 59. So the bolus is 40 units per kilogram. 
So now we're changing 40 units per kilogram times our 50 kilogram patient is 2,000 units. So how much do we administer to get 2,000 units into the patient? Well, 2,000 units is our D, 1,000 is our H, 1 ml is our Q, so we have to administer 2 milliliters. So a bolus dose for a PTT of 70. Well, if we look back at the protocol, 70 to 100 is a goal. So there's no bolus needed here. Okay, so here we're looking for a flow rate. Uh, the flow rate is based on the person's body weight and a per time drug rate, drug D rate, as we called it previously. So your D rate is also based on body weight. And from that, we have to find a flow rate. So let's think about this for a minute. We're looking for a flow rate. Flow rate is usually a volume per time. And if we look at our order, our order is an amount of drug per body weight. Once we know the body weight, then we're going to have an amount of drug per an amount of time. So that's our what we're calling our D rate is an amount of drug per an amount of time. So the volume is usually in milliliters and the time is usually in hours for our flow rate. Now here, uh, our drug could be milligrams, kilograms per time. Um, but then also we have our on hand. So our D rate is an amount of drug per time, which notice time is on the bottom. And our on hand is an amount of drug per milliliter. Well, if we flip that around and we have the milliliters and the amount of drug, as long as our drug units match, which we can always make happen through conversion, and our time we can always make it hours through conversion, we're going to end up with milliliters per hour. So basically we have to take our order and convert it to an amount of drug per an amount of hours. That is easily done because all we have to do is take our micrograms per kilogram, multiply it by the kilograms. That gives us our amount of drug. Then we could, it's in per minutes here, we can multiply it by 60 over one hour to get it in per hour. So we can get an amount of drug per hour. And this is micrograms. We can easily change that with conversion to make it a milligram. So if we make this milligrams per hour and we multiply it by milliliters per 10 milligrams, we're going to end up with our flow rate of milliliters over hours. So we take our pounds, convert it to kilograms. That's our first step. So now we have to find our D rate. Micrograms per kilogram. You take your micrograms, multiply it by kilograms. So it, and it's per minute initially. So we get 84.1 micrograms per minute. Now we're gonna change that to per hour micrograms over minutes times 60 over an hour. So now we have our micrograms per hour. Uh, now on hand is milligrams. Um, so the book tells you to convert on hand to micrograms. Actually it doesn't matter if you convert your micrograms to milligrams it'll still work out the same. But I followed the book so I changed my 10 milligrams converted that to micrograms. So 10 milligrams per 100 milliliters, multiply it by one microgram per milligram, and I get 100 micrograms per one milliliter. So I actually skipped a step in here because this would be 10,000 micrograms 
per 100 milliliters. But when you reduce that, it reduces to 100 milligrams per 1 milliliter. So now we have our micrograms per hour and we have our micrograms per milliliter. So we take our micrograms per hour and we multiply it by the inversion of, instead of 100 micrograms per milliliter, one milliliter per 100 micrograms, and we end up with milliliters per hour. So do our division here and we get 50.5 milliliters per hour. So I did this a little bit different and I showed how to convert um, the micrograms, how to multiply the micrograms times the milliliter per microgram on top and I kept the hour on the bottom. This is the same as if you would write 5,046 micrograms per hour times one milliliter over micrograms, you're still going to end up with the 50.46 or 50.5 milliliters per hour. So that's your flow rate. And just for safety, sometimes you might need to monitor the per minute flow rate. So you can take your per hour flow rate and multiply it by one hour over 60 minutes to get a per minute flow rate. Okay, so here we have a 154 pound patient, heparin 18 units per kilogram per hour. So we convert our weight and we multiply by the 18 to find our units per hour, our D rate as we called it. So then to find the flow rate, we have to take our D rate and multiply by are um, on hand, but we invert it because remember to find flow rate given a D rate, you have to invert your on hand. So we have our 1260 units per hour times our milliliters, 500 milliliters over 25,000 units. Cancel the units, multiply across top bottom, divide, and you have your flow rate of milliliters per hour. Okay, so this problem is a little bit different. We have an order of lidocaine, two grams in a thousand milliliters of dextrose. So we're monitoring this patient and we see that there's 600 milliliters of dextrose left in the bag. So if there's 600 milliliters left, how much lidocaine, lidocaine has the patient received? Well, if there's 600 milliliters left and we started out with a thousand, the patients received 400 milliliters. So in receiving that 400 milliliters, how much lidocaine was in that 400 milliliters? We can easily find that by setting up a proportion with our drug concentration. We know there was two grams in a thousand milliliters and the patient received 400 milliliters, so how many grams were in that 400 milliliters? Cross multiply the two times 400, then divide by your thousand. So we have two times 400 is 800. 800 divided by a thousand is 0 0.8 grams. So uh, we know the patient received 400 milliliters and there was 0 0.8 grams of lidocaine in that 400 milliliters. Okay, so now we come to IV flow rate adjustments and titrated medications. So flow rates of heparin and other medications may need adjustments. The goal is to administer the least amount of medication to achieve the desired effect. So we have a patient 70 kilograms. So their current heparin flow rate is 25.2 milliliters per hour. And an APTT test is 120 seconds. So according to a protocol, we're supposed to decrease the rate
by 2 units per kilogram per hour. So on hand is 50 units per milliliter. So according to our original protocol, the infusion rate is started at 18 units per kilogram per hour. If we are now decreasing that rate by two units, the 18 units per kilogram per hour decreased by two is now 16 units per kilogram per hour. So we have to recalculate our D, D rate basically, using 16 units per kilogram per that hour. So we have units per kilogram times the kilogram, which gives us 1120 units per hour. So now we can go ahead and recalculate the flow rate. Well, we know the D rate, remember we learned, flow rate from a D rate, you take the D rate and multiply by on hand. The D rate is 1120 units per hour. Our on hand, and remember it has to be inverted. Instead of units over milliliters, we write it as milliliters per unit. Cancel your units, multiply across the top and bottom and divide, and we get 22.4 milliliters per hour. So that actually decreased the flow rate. And that is the end of week nine lecture part one.